For all of us looking into the future, there is increasing uncertainty for chaos. For us to prepare, prevent and respond, we need to first understand. This video will teach the fundamental process for how intelligence organizations provide insight from uncertainty to create intelligence from raw data. Welcome to the Hayter Institute's Intelligence Series. Thank you for joining us and welcome. My name is Mitch King and I'm the CEO and founder of the Humanitarian Assistance and Disaster Relief Institute. We are an NGO with a mission to protect human life and reduce suffering through the provision of credible information. We do this through disaster intelligence, technology and training. During this series, we explore how intelligence can be applied to help promote our mission. If you believe this is a good cause, give us a like, subscribe and check out the links below. In this video, you'll be learning about the intelligence cycle, a foundational process for converting data into actionable intelligence insights. So first, what is intelligence? Intelligence is both a process as well as a product. When we're talking about the process, we're really talking about this cycle that we're about to discuss today. And when we're talking about a product, we're simply talking about that product which is produced by that process, which we disseminate to support decision making. Many people believe that intelligence is exclusive to the national security sector, but this isn't the case. Because as we said before, intelligence is simply a process or a product. It can be applied agnostic of sector. However, there are some different constraints and principles that exist for it to be effective and acceptable in different sectors. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina marked a pivotal moment for applying intelligence for disaster relief purposes. During this event, specialized capabilities from the Air Force, the Air National Guard, and the Department of Homeland Security were, for the first time, combined in a concerted effort to support national disaster relief missions. The key disciplines that had an impact were GeoInt, or Geospatial Intelligence, and OSINT, or open source intelligence. Organizations converged, providing critical images, full motion video, terrain analysis, predictive analyses, and impact assessments. These crucial insights shaped the response strategy, enabling them to assess damage and zero in on stranded survivors, as well as to forecast potential issues and potential dangers. The main capabilities that were involved, being geospatial intelligence as well as open source methods, are both accessible now to public organisations. You just need to understand how to apply them. It is much for this purpose that the Hayter Institute was established to ensure that these kind of capabilities could be applied to support relief operations across the globe. Now we will explain the intelligence cycle as we illustrate its application in the wake of a devastating hurricane event. So first you've got the direction step. This phase defines and prioritizes the intelligence needs, setting the course based on specific objectives and requirements. In the aftermath of a hurricane, this could include both the response and recovery requirements, as well as understanding the security and safety concerns of both the public that's been impacted as well as those providing assistance. The collection step. At this juncture, data is gathered using various methodologies and sources, all aimed to fulfill the intelligence needs established during the direction phase. So what could this look like in a hurricane scenario? Well, you could imagine a reconnaissance team of medical and engineering experts moving to assess the immediate medical needs as well as conducting infrastructure damage assessments. This could include measurement and signature intelligence, or MASINT. Geophysical MASINT could be used to detect changes in weather patterns, while acoustic MASINT could be used to detect submerged hazards. In addition, technologies such as drones could be used to collect photogrammetry data, which could then be used to create 3D models of affected areas. Open source intelligence could comb through social media for distress calls and check for imminent threats. Geospatial intelligence, or GeoInt, could utilize satellite imagery, offering an overhead perspective of disaster-stricken areas. Now the processing step. This involves converting the collected raw data into a coherent and actionable format, ensuring it's ready for the next phase, being analysis. For our hurricane and relief example, this could resemble a dedicated team transferring diverse data sets from drone imagery to the social media alerts 
into both logs as well as a dynamic comprehensive relief map. Analysis. Here the processed information is examined using both structured analytical techniques for qualitative analysis as well as quantitative methods. In our hurricane context, analysts might employ methods such as link analysis and backcasting. Now the dissemination step. The refined intelligence is distributed to different stakeholders, ensuring that the right people have the right information at the right time to make more effective and informed decisions. Picture a hurricane relief morning briefing as teams gear up and decision makers make their plans. They're now armed with the latest intelligence to optimize their efforts. Now underpinning that cycle, you have both feedback loops as well as coordination functions, making sure that every step is synchronized and fine-tuned for maximum efficiency. To delve deeper into the intricacies of intelligence-driven strategies, our e-course on intelligence analysis fundamentals awaits. Learn real-world techniques. Be aware, positions are limited. Check out the link below to kickstart your journey to becoming an intelligence analyst. Remember to like, subscribe, and journey alongside us. Thank you, and until next time.